In this video, I'm going to talk about chords that are not primary triads and how you choose notes to double when you're writing those chords in four parts. We've already identified the primary triads, one, four, and five, and we've looked at a series of different ways that you can choose to double notes in those primary triads when you're writing them in root position. We're still dealing at the moment with root position chords, so whenever we write a chord in four parts, the bottom note, the root note, will be the note that is in the bass. It will always be the bass note at this point in time until we introduce the idea of inversions, which we will do in a few videos from, from uh, this one. What I've done on the board here is written up the other triads that are not primary triads, and I've written them in red so that they stand out a little bit. So the two and the three and the six and the seven are the triads that occur naturally above a major scale or above a minor scale, and they occur, uh, but they are not primary triads. One, four, and five are our primary triads. The others, two, three, six, and seven, are not primary triads. These triads, as you will remember from previous videos for last semester, the introductory foundational videos, we talked about triads sharing uh, a kind of function in common. That is to say that some of the not primary triads nonetheless work and function like the primary triads. For example, the two and the four kind of connect and function in a very similar way. You can have a progression that has a four chord in it, and you can put a two chord in in place, and it generally will work quite well in that context. The six, the three, and the one chord share a lot of similarities. Even though the three chord is not used that often, when it is used, it often shares connections with the one chord or the six chord. And then the last two that are left, the five chord and the seven chord, also share a connection. The seven chord can sometimes substitute for the five chord in a particular progression. And while the seven chord is a more unusual chord because it's diminished, it's a more unusual chord when we were looking at rock and pop style last semester, it does, however, have much more of a use. It's much more commonly used in this common practice era, and we will include it quite regularly as a possible chord you can choose to create progressions in this style period, in the, uh, in the common practice style. So, when you are choosing a note to double in these chords, are there any guidelines that you should use? Well, there are two things. The first of them is, is a guideline that is almost a rule. I would almost go as far as to say it's a rule. And that is that you would normally, in most circumstances, you would never choose to double the leading tone. The leading tone here is a very active tone. It wants to get to the tonic. It's that classic when, we, when you go la da 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 da. That feeling of wanting to get to the tonic is very strong. And because of that, it creates a directional movement. Now, in a subsequent video, I'm going to talk to you about something that we need to avoid when we are writing in this style period, and doubling the leading tone can cause you to, be, to find it very difficult to avoid this particular circumstance that I'll introduce later on. So for now, accept the fact that we generally do not double the leading tone. And that, the reason why we don't double the leading tone will make more sense in a later video, and I'll point it out when we get there so that you, you make the connection. But for now, just accept that the, the guideline, the guideline that's almost strong enough to be a rule, is don't double the leading tone. So, if you have a chord that you want to voice that has the leading tone in it, like the seven chord, you would not usually double the root, because the root is the leading tone. You would have one root, and then you might have two thirds, or, and one fifth, or one root, one third, and two fifths. But you would make the decision based on the fact that you know you should not double the leading tone. You should not double the leading tone, for example, in the five chord. You should not double it in the three chord. Wherever the leading tone occurs, you would try and avoid doubling it. Now, the uh, other notes on the other end, the other extreme, 
is let's take a look at, say, a very stable note in the scale, the, the tonic C. Wherever the tonic occurs, it's usually a good note to double. So the tonic occurs in the sixth chord as the third of the chord. So because the tonic is a strong, stable note, closely related to the key, I mean, it is the foundation of the key, it is a good candidate to double. So if you want to double a note in the sixth chord, actually having one root two-thirds and one fifth is a good choice because the tonic is a strong, stable note in the key. So when you're choosing notes to double, certainly part of it is going to be context. Where you're coming from in a chord progression and where you're going to in a chord progression is going to be important. We'll get to that when we talk about something called voice leading. That's the way you choose to place notes next to each other as you move from one chord to the next, to the next, to the next. We'll get to that down the road. But when you're aware of voice leading, that in combination with an understanding of where the notes are in the scale, whether they are active notes or more stable notes, will help you to make decisions about which notes to double. I gave you some fairly distinct doubling guidelines for root position primary triads. I'm being a little more open with the uh, other triads. I'm saying wait until you see a triad in context. Think about the voice leading, which we'll talk about in a subsequent video, and then make an informed decision based on where the note of the chord is in the scale. If it is a stable note, you can certainly double it. If it's a more active tone, like the leading tone, avoid doubling it. And that will all make more sense when we start putting this into context. This is a good example of understanding and experimenting now with writing some of these other chords in four parts and with doubling one of the notes in order to create a four-part chord but being aware in the back of your mind that there are more guidelines to come more context in which to write these chords and that even though you might write them individually now you may make other decisions when it comes to writing them in context and we're going to talk about that both in subsequent videos and in class for now your job is to take some of the chords that are not primary triads and just experiment writing them out in four parts, seeing if you can make good decisions and if you can articulate to me in class why you chose to double a certain note. Why did you choose to double, say, the third of the two chord? Or why did you choose to double, say, the root of the three chord? Or why did you choose not to double the root of the seven chord? What are some of the reasons you're, you're bringing to bear, some of the understanding you have when it comes to making those decisions? Think that through, try writing a few of these out, and as I say, we'll talk about this in more detail in class. Thank you.